All right, we're going to go ahead and get this meeting called to order, the Monday, September 9th, 7 o'clock council meeting. Uh, roll call. Tom Marzlet. Ben Keel. Michelle Otto. Lloyd Johnson. Kirby Moynihan. Deb Belter. James Monjay. Wayne McCormick. All right, and uh, unfortunately, Pastor Kathy is not here with us tonight, so we're going to go ahead to the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we need to make some adjustments to the agenda, which I'm really loud today. Um, under new business, let's go, with the preliminary budget, we're going to be adding item A, year 2020 preliminary general fund budget and levy. Item 1, resolution 2019-26, a resolution authorizing a decrease to levy for crossover bond 2010A. Item 2 is resolution 2019-27, a, re a resolution authorizing levy to replace lost sewer and water access fees and trunk area fees due to reduction in new construction and development and then item three resolution 2019-28 a resolution authorizing me to decrease to levy for geo street reconstruction bond 2017-8 i make a motion to approve the agenda as amended second all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed motion passes five zero Consent agenda. Kathy? Yeah. You want, to, you want to step up? You want to come on up? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hello. Well, let us pray. Uh, God, we pray your protection over this space and for all the people who are here today. We ask in this season of change with the, tra with the change in the weather and the trees and the harvest that you also change our hearts. Change our hearts to new understandings of how to love one another and build community together. Thank you for each one that comes here on behalf of community and bless our comings and goings. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Any discussion? Uh, favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes by zero. Open forum. Chair Barringer. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. You may choose to believe this or not. Uh, last month when Captain Todd Hoffman was here, I was actually scheduled to be here that night. And back in February when I had plotted out my plan for the year to come and revisit all the city councils, I did not realize it was the same night as the Cocado Corn Carnival. So I ended up, uh, I was over in Cocado that night and was not able to be here. So I just wanted to come back to all of the councils and thank you for being gracious last year while I was campaigning. You allowed me a few minutes to come and introduce myself and answer any questions that you had. And so I just wanted to make sure that I followed up with you. So it was good to hear after the meeting that I was missed and uh, wondered where I was and where I had been. So I appreciate the comments and I want you all to know that I'm always available to any questions or concerns that you might have. And if you have any questions tonight or follow up from last month, I'd be more than happy. I'll let Connor take care of the monthly sheriff's report for you. He knows what's going on in town. I just have a quick question on our ordinance. Um, how, under our contract, does the Ray County Sheriff's Department help us enforce our, enforce our ordinances? Depends on the ordinance. If it's like city code, if somebody's not mowing their lawn, we are not going to go around and ticket people for mowing lawn. That's administrative. But 
um, the city would be able to administer. However, certain ordinances like the parking violations, uh, winter parking, things like that. So basically it would be more of a discussion that you and I would have and uh, what our comfort level is. If it's an enforceable law by citation, certainly we could come in and do that and we'd prosecute through the county attorney's office. If it's a code violation like lawns or you know, the junk vehicles maybe in the backyard that can get to criminal, but there's some steps that the city takes ahead of that. So it's basically a conversation that takes place, but certainly anything that we can help with, we, we can or we try to help with. So. Okay. Okay. You guys have any questions? Did, did talk, talk last month about uh, one of the topics of conversation recently is the the increase that uh, you guys all know uh, five percent and four or four and a half percent uh, for next year do you have any questions regarding that I, I've been telling people there's really three main driving factors behind that increase it seems like if you go back historically and look there's there's some adjustments that have taken place I think if you go back to 2001 to 2004 there was about 20 percent over those four years so it was between 4.2 and 4.8 or 4.9 percent per year for four years. I do not see this as the new normal. Uh, there's three driving factors behind it this year, and we're going into 20 and 21. Uh, the first one is the county is undertaking a Compton class study right now, as you've probably all heard. So that's a good thing for us. We're trying to become more competitive in the job market. It helps with employer retention. Uh, but the county board, while they're keeping most of that information pretty close to their chest, they have dropped a few hints, uh, and so we were able to try to plan for it, but uh, we haven't planned completely for it because we don't have all the information. The second one is, is Ford has done a very good job of cornering the market and then jacking up the price. So they're smart in that business sense. They took away the car option a couple of years ago. So we've gone to the Explorers. Uh, next year, uh, in the 2020 model that we're going to have to order, those prices per squad got, went up $6,500 per squad. So just that line item alone, uh, my budget increased by 124.5. And so that uh, obviously gets rolled out. And then the third factor is while post board did not mandate additional hours, we still need 48 hours of continuing education every three years. Uh, they did mandate 16 hours of those 48 have to do with mental illness, crisis, de-escalation techniques, things like that. So it's not like a, a change where historically post board has mandated something different in firearms or use of force. We have those instructors, we, 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 we rework our lesson plans and they're able to take care of that. We actually have to bring somebody inside to, to go through that stuff with the pedigree, mental health, psychiatry, or psychology. So those are really the three three driving factors behind the increases. But if you're asked, is, it, is that the way the future is going to look? I don't believe so. Good level. So what did Ford give you for that 6500 bucks? <laughs> I'm not even sure all of the options. Uh, what I'm told is uh, some of the equipment that was optional before has become standard. A lot of it has to do with the engine, and we are not going with the hybrid. Uh, it's just not a good place in law enforcement, the way we use our vehicles and the power sources that we need. It has not been a good fit. And so, but some of the options, um, I don't know what they are, but it has to do with some of those options not being optional anymore. Okay. So, thank you all very much. Appreciate thank you. it. Thanks for coming. Ready for me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 The one issue that we are noticing though is with the traffic going south on County Road 12 now due to the detour on uh, Highway 25, we're getting more accidents around the area of Jack and Ease and that general area we're getting more accidents up, both minor traffic with injuries. So just make sure that if you're driving in that area, if you're paying more attention because there's people that don't normally drive there that are not being forced to take that road. Um, and we are we are hearing your complaints about the traffic there. When we have free time, we are trying to sit there and actually your own traffic, speed enforcement, stop sign enforcement, whatever it may be, or just sit there while we write reports. But again, that's as time allows. So, any questions for me on the activity? How's the hands-free lockdown? 
I haven't noticed any problems with it around here. Um, part of the issue is that I work at night, so it's hard to see and hard to see if people are actually hearing it. But I've talked to the people that I work with. It seems like, for the most part, there's compliance, in, at least in the Montrose area. So I appreciate that as well. I've seen a lot of um, concerns on the crosswalks, too. Yep. Crosswalks. How are you guys like, taking care of that? So again, as time allows, we can sit and watch crosswalks. Um, it's actually been, last month was fairly busy from a call load, both Montrose and Waverly. So when we're not busy, we can sit there and watch crosswalks, do enforcement on that. If there's a problem area that you guys notice or someone has come up to you and said, uh, say 12 in center is bad, um, let me know, let one of my partners know, let Kevin know, and we can focus our areas there. But unless unless someone's telling us about the issues, we uh, we don't really know about it. With the, with, with, excuse me, with the school starting now, you know, yep. crosswalks when it should be launched. Yep, that's about the yeah, idea with school starting. Um, what that 12 and Second Street, you have the online tree school. It's something that we should probably focus on, and I can definitely talk to our traffic cars and uh, the daytime car. Make sure that that's an area that you guys want us to watch a little bit more. Anything else? Anything else? No. No. We're good. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, City Council. <coughs> okay. The council meeting, budget meeting, finance meeting, our iconic commission of board meetings. Uh, now with Deb, we discuss EDA for the schedule of the parks company over here. Uh, council street, Streetscape Committee, Chamber of Commerce, Personnel Committee. And special council workshop. Uh, Montrose Day celebration, Montrose Days itself, um, fire department meetings, um, special meetings, special budgetship meeting, um, a couple special uh, meetings coming into to City Hall. Um, that's about it. Uh, special council meetings, personnel meetings, <coughs> Montrose Days, um, the Highway 12 Coalition, Park and Rec. So uh, council meetings and special council meetings, planning and zoning, and uh, <coughs> workshops. Okay. Council meeting, special council meeting, budget meeting, finance committee, streetscape. Okay. Kevin? Okay. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, first thing in your pack is our activity report. Um, very busy month for us in August, our second busiest month since I've been chief over the last five years. A um, few extra vehicle accidents, as Deputy Garrett had kind of mentioned that we've got called out to as well, so just remind all the motor public to be careful out on the roads, especially with all these detours that are going around and more are going to be continuing. Um, and then we had Montrose days, obviously, and that usually keeps us very busy. Um, in and amongst the station and outside Montrose is stuff. So, any questions on the activity report? Next item is I need authorization to send four of the fire department officers, so myself, Tom Markton, and Tom Wynick, and Kelly Stoll to the 2019 Fire Chiefs Association Conference in Duluth. Um, this is a great opportunity for us to network, see the new tactics, learn some stuff. Um, it's been a custom that we send um, a few people every year if we can. Um, with it being up in Duluth, the cost usually exceeds um, my spending allowance. So I'm just looking for authorization to send the four of us to that this year. And we pay for the class and hotel and mileage. They're on their own for meals and anything extra that they might want to do. I'll make a motion to send four fire department officers to the Minnesota Fire Chiefs Conference. I'll go second. Aye. Ben? Aye. 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 And Kirby? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Next is resignation of Firefighter Jessica Binkley, effective August 29th of 2019. She served with the Montrose Fire Department for two years, two months, and 17 days. She moved out of the area, so she's no longer eligible to be on our department. So she got a motion to uh, accept her resignation. I'll make a motion to accept Jessica Binkley's resignation. Second. I'll second. Can we be second? Oh, you did. 
All right, I'll vote aye, Lloyd. Aye. Ben. Aye. Tom. Aye. And Kirby. Aye. Motion passes, five zero. Um, so under number four, fire department information. Um, recently, Matt Menard, my assistant chief, stepped down from the fire department, which leaves me without an assistant chief. So I've selected uh, Tom Martin to fill out the remainder of this year's term as assistant chief. So he'll be the assistant chief now until December 31st, 2019, at which time I'll, or whoever's the chief at the time, will re-interview and figure out uh, who the assistant and the captains and stuff will be. So. Um, looking forward to working with him as my assistant chief moving forward here for the rest of this year and hopefully uh, things will work out well. Um, Matt's resignation will be on next month's uh, agenda because he retired this month here so that will show up on the next one. So um, He'll be slowly missed from the fire department and city as well so he's still around the area and stuff and is still kind of helping us out with some things that he is just very good at. So. Um, so that was just an informational item. Next one is Deb. The uh, position for uh, the Chief of the Montrose Fire Department was posted for accepting applications and they only did receive one application and that was Mr. Triplett. And so we just need a motion for you to appoint him as the Chief. The term is a two-year term and it will start January 1st. 2020 and end December 31st in 2021. I'll make a motion to go ahead and appoint uh, Kevin Triplett to the position of the Montrose Fire Department for the two year term January 1, 2020 to December 31, 2021. I'll second. Right, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm writing my list down. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'll vote aye. Kirby? Aye. Tom? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. And Ben? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Kevin. Um, next item, I'm going to have Mike Markton, um, our treasurer for our relief organization, <coughs> come up and present this one. Good evening. We, we joined Para four years ago, three and a half years ago. And we're trying to keep our funding around 100%, and right now we're way overfunded, so we'd like to increase our retirement from $3,300 to $4,000 per year. And that would still leave us with reserve money if the markets go down, so we're not capped out completely. It's what we did the cost analysis, and they came back with $4,000. is easy to do with no additional funding from the city. Uh, what about the other communities our size that they keep them? I I don't know what they are because there isn't many communities in our area that went with Para. I know Watertown just recently went with Para. It's the best thing we ever did. Mm -hmm. I can point blank say that because I was treasurer back then and ended up being treasurer there now for a couple months again because our treasurer resigned, so that's why I'm here. Um, yeah, so we went to Para was the best thing we did. And, and our investments are coming back good. And I, it's, I'm, not, I'm not concerned with any departments are doing, I'm concerned with Montrose is doing. This was the recommendation from Kara yeah. itself. They did a, a um, We have to do the cost analysis, which yep. we did. And they sent it back to us saying that they should go to that. We sent in four numbers. Um, one was 30, 35, 37, 4,000, and 43. So the 37 comes back zero, the 4,000 comes back zero additional funding. The 43 comes back with 6,000 extra contribution. But I don't want to go beyond that. I want to leave some back if the markets go down a little bit. We have that number to cover. So that's why we're, the board recommended and the fire department recommended go with the 4,000. And we have uh, Mike and some of the more senior members of the fire department to thank for our financial stewardship um, with our relief association back when we were our own. They made some very smart investments and always continued con making contributions to the relief fund so that continued to grow rather than just try and keep it steady. And we're continuing doing that today. We're not just, oh, we're totally funded. We're just going to go spend that money elsewhere. No, we want to continue that because it is a great tool for recruitment, retention, and things like that. It's probably one of the biggest tools that we have. 
for recruitment retention, which is a huge, huge issue in the fire service today. Okay. I make a motion to approve resolution 2921. I'll second. All right, Kirby. Yes. Uh, Lloyd. Aye. I'll vote aye, Ben. Aye. Tom. Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. And, and one comment on the fire chief's convention, since I was there for 15 years, it's the best convention they go to. You learn a lot. The classes are excellent, so you're not wasting the money sitting in there. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't really speak to them much, but I'm going to be here. Okay. Um, in your meeting packet, there's going to be the meeting minutes from last week's Park and Rec meeting. Unfortunately, I was unable to attend due to uh, being out of the state for work. But uh, just to highlight a few items on there, dates were set for the Halloween Christmas decorating contests are there. Those will be posted in the newsletter. Um, I do believe the intent right now is still to be doing a, uh, uh, a decoration or like an ornament item for with breakfast with Santa for the Montrose Days Committee. And once again, I was unavailable to make it last night to that. It's going to be because of a previous engagement. But uh, the intent would still be to be partnering with them and then doing an event there as well. And then doing the tree lighting once again up at Veterans Park. So I believe all those dates are going to be put in the newsletter as well. And then we did get an item. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to review it very much or discuss with the other uh, uh, commission members about a potential for some additional playground equipment is possibly going to be donated by landscape, landscape structures to a park in Delano. And there's some existing items, I do believe, in there that we might be able to accrue for putting into uh, Forest Creek. Forest Creek. I'm totally losing it this. Um, once again, I haven't reviewed it or anything. Really looked at it much more than what's kind of printed in minutes. So I just know if you guys had any comments or questions that you want me to make sure we discuss at our next month's meeting or anything, or is it just going to be kind of still trying to get all the facts straight out? Yeah, we can more really information. Should, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, it says here, though, that the city staff is working with the city of Delano. Do you guys have a little bit more information on that? Um, <coughs> um, I'm, I'm working with the city of Maine ministry there, Phil Kurd, and he is going to, I asked him how much it's going to cost us, he, he thinks it will be a minimal fee, but he did tell us to budget 10000 for uh, the equipment to put it up because theirs is all rotted. And then we will also have to uh, budget to do, uh, to get the area ready for the, the equipment. He will not know exactly what price they're looking at for us for the equipment until the end of this month and then he'll let me know at that time. Does he know that if we proceed with it, when we could get the equipment? He does not know that yet. Okay. No. He has to work with landscape structures. And from what I understand, from what he gave me, I think they're looking at spring of next year. Yeah, because I think all the uprights need to be replaced because they're buried in concrete. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. Where would we have that? Do we have that in the budget? Or do we need to look at Okay. There's money there. We'll, uh, we'll contact one of the, maybe like our homes that's working in Forest Creek and see if they'll help us out with grading the spot where they want to put it. We'll have to check out where we can go with it. We need to find out how big it has to be and stuff, the area. And maybe we can get our home to help us do some grading there and then. Should we have the name of the existing park that's in the home? Pardon me? The existing park in the home is where these. It's located in the development. Um, how familiar are you with taking 30 into Delano, County Road 30? It's the housing development on the left. Um, it's it's a buddy and farm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with the housing development. Down past Dairy Plain. So if you're coming that way, if you're coming that way from Delano, yes, it's past Dairy Queen, and when you get out to the country, you'll see a housing development on the right. It's that housing development. Park site something. And there are pictures of it. 
Um, Jessica has pictures of it, so if you want to see what it looks like, she has pictures of it. Okay, that might have been something that they discussed. Yeah, she brought it to them at the current meeting, so. Yeah, Wayne, well, I don't think we need, you need more, much more than a bobcat to read that off, right? Well, it depends. It should, it should be fairly easy. Yeah, because our home says a bobcat out there all the time. It just has to be leveled off because we put cement curb around it, and that then we back fill it back up so that they can just mow right up to it. Right. So just enough to level it all off and sure. the curb in. Thanks. Good job. Planning and zoning. I put the minutes in front of you tonight. The first thing that was talked about at planning and zoning is a resident and his wife came to talk about doing an oversized garage. They will need a variance for that. Our ordinance does not allow them to do that. So they did pick up the application for the variance, but they have not brought it back to City Hall, so I'm not <coughs> sure where that's at. It's in their court now. They have to decide if they want to do it or not. And then the rest of the meeting went totally to the public hearing for the sign ordinance. And some of the issues that were brought up are one of, one of the commissioners does not really want to see uh, people that want to put garage sale signs up, does not want to charge them a fee, or they didn't think a need to fill out an application, and I asked them to have them fill out an application. Uh, they don't necessarily have to do a fee, but I need some teeth to uh, take care of code enforcement when it comes to that ordinance. So they have to fill out an application so I know when they put the sign up, and, how, and then they'll be told how many days they have, and they have to let me know if that's enough days, and then I am able then to take it down. I did take pictures of different signs all over the city and presented them that night at planning and zoning, and that was one of the things that was around quite a few areas is garage sale signs that were in disrepair or cockeyed or just laying on the ground because people didn't pick them up. So I need to have some kind of teeth to enforce that part of it. So we're gonna, we had to continue the public hearing. We didn't have anybody comment on anything. And I did have some members from the streetscape committee that said that they would be there that night. They were not. So we're continuing the public hearing to this. <coughs> and then he just gave an update on some of the properties that we've talked about in the past. The one is 140 Nelson Boulevard. That's the yellow house on uh, Kitty Corner from Casey's. The other one is the demolition and new construction at 111. 111 Buffalo Avenue South. They were going to move that building, if you remember, and it was too weak to do that, so he tore it down. He's building a new one. And then the former Casey's building, the EDA is going to meet with the person that bought that and the realtor because there's some things that he needs to do in order to use that building for his business. And so we're going to meet with him to find out how the city can help him to get where he needs to be. And then the last one is the preserve housing development, and they are still interested, and we will be meeting with them in the future. And then I also need to let you know that our city planner, Mr. Miles Campbell, is done as of Wednesday night. He took a job with the city of Golden Valley. Uh, we met today with Mr. Gritman, one of the owners of NAC, and with Miles and Ryan, Mr. Gritman's son, is going to take over as our city planner. Will he be here at Wednesday's meeting? Yes, he, he's going to try. The only other thing we have to talk about tomorrow night with planning zoning is Ryan is available because he works for other cities. He's available for the night of our city council meetings, but he works for another city the night of our planning zoning. So we're going to have to change the planning zoning meeting. We're looking at probably the second Wednesday of the month. So I'll talk to the planning zoning tomorrow night about that. Wednesday night. Wednesday night, did I say? Tomorrow. Sorry. <laughs> Any questions on the minutes? Yeah, I have a question on that garage sale thing. So anybody that wants to have a garage sale has to go into the city and get a permit? To put up a sign, yes. How are you going to get that information out? Are you going to put that in the newsletter? Or? It'll be in the newsletter. It will be um, on the city's website. It will be in on Facebook. And I can talk to the paper, too. They have a free section where we can put information and see if they'll let me put information in a little bit. I'm going to be honest, I just don't see the point of that. But I mean, I get that there's signs around, but that's 
over the top, but if that's what they want, then I guess the recommendation has come to us. They have a veto final decision on that, so we'll see what happens. Okay. The next thing that we are going to start working on is the code enforcement ordinance because the way our, our ordinance is written, I don't have a lot to lean back on as far as code enforcement to uh, remediate properties that are blighted. So uh, we need to start working on that and getting some fines in there and other, other things that can help me. The year 2020 general fund budget and levy was brought to you at your workshop on August 26th. We discussed it that night. Everybody was in agreement that they were okay with what was presented to them. And so tonight what we need is a motion and a second to approve uh, both. Unless you have any other questions about what was presented that night. I'll make a motion to the 2020 preliminary general budget fund and levy. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I wanted to question that. Was it $1,000 we added on for wages or something like that? We didn't change anything. Huh? We, we, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Yeah, when you're going to make somebody full time, you said that you said that that was budgeted in there already. We we didn't change anything on it. It's exactly the way it was presented to you that night. So nothing was changed. Any further discussion? All right, I'll vote aye and then. Aye. Lloyd. Aye. Tom. Aye. And Kirby. Aye. Motion passes five zero. Franchise fees? Uh, resolution. Yeah, the resolutions. All right, um, resolutions 2019-26, which is authorizing to decrease levy to crossover bond 2010A. Just so everybody knows, these are just standard resolutions that need to be adopted tonight as part of the general bond budget and the so we just need a motion mm -hmm. make a motion to approve resolution 2019-26 i'll second uh all in favor aye aye, aye. any opposed aye. all right 20 uh motion passes five zero resolution 2019-27 a resolution authorizing levy to replace Last sewer and water access fees and trunk access fees. I'll make a motion to approve for uh, resolution 2019 27. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Resolution 2019 28, a resolution authorizing to decrease to levy for Geo Street reconstruction bond 2017 8. Make a motion to approve resolution 2019 28. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes 5 0. All right, now franchisees. So at the August 26, 2019, Special City Council meeting, we talked about franchise fees. You had asked staff to implement franchise fees for electric, which would be XL Energy, and then there is a portion of the city of Montrose that is right Hennepin Electric Cooperative. So before you, at that meeting I had told you that there was some ordinances that needed to be passed to implement those, and we have to get them implemented by the end of this month because the utility companies want to start this January 1st, and they need the 90 days in order to do that. So they need to be approved tonight, and then I need to publish them on, in the paper this Thursday. So before you, the first one is um, 
Mr. Monjars, the attorney, went through them with me and helped me to get them ready. The first one is we had to change our existing ordinance to add for gas utilities that we can implement a franchise fee. So that's the first one. Correct. The, uh, the original ordinance, as written, is made a provision for a separate franchise fee. So we uh, amended that ordinance to provide for the franchise. And then I just want to add, because we really can just go down the line and approve these, you'll notice that there's a resolution after each one. The resolution is approving so that I can publish a summary ordinance. Otherwise, we would have to publish the whole ordinance, and it's very costly. To <coughs> so this allows me to just publish a portion of it. We can also add that these were submitted to XL Energy and Ray Hannibin Co-op, and they've both given us their blessing. So they're in agreement with it. So you need a motion for each one then? For each one. Correct. I mean for the ordinance and resolution? Yes, please. Well, I'm going to make a motion to approve ordinance number 2019-08 of the gas franchise. I'll second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes by zero. Make a motion to res to uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, been, it's been a long day. Motion to approve resolution 2019-22. Resolution to authorize the summary of publication of ordinance 2019-08. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 2019-09. Yes, sir. You seconded it? Kirby. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2019-23. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes five zero. I'll make a motion to uh, uh, for ordinance number uh, twenty nineteen dash ten. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes five zero. Make a motion to approve resolution twenty nineteen dash twenty four. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Make a motion to approve ordinance 2019 11. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Make a motion to approve resolution 2019 25. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Good job, guys. Next up is City Administrator Position Discussion. Um, I was directed by the Personnel Committee to put this on the agenda. Not specifically, but go ahead, Tom. Well, I feel at this point in time that we just need to make a motion to appoint the developer as our city administrator, since she's been doing the job now for a year and four months, um, uh, without um, without any probation. That's no one's uh, having a discussion about it. Well, you make a motion, then you second it. I'll second that motion. Okay. Okay. Now there's discussion. Okay, whose idea was this? Who brought this up? I mean, this is an added cost to the city, too. Whose idea was this? It was a joint idea for the personnel committee. It was? Well, it was, it was brought up for other reasons to make different improvements within the city. But not this way. Well, this was a potential way of doing it. Okay, what's the main reason though? We have a lot of things going on in the city and, and 
we need somebody who can have their thumb on the pulse of the day to day activity and, and basically run the city from city hall. Okay? Um, and we already have a person that's been doing that job. Okay? The, the amount of money is minuscule in comparison. When you look at, you know, I'm sure you reviewed the data on what other cities of our size are paying for city administrators. Okay? Now, we. What are what are we going to gain? What are we going to well, gain? Yeah, what, what we're going to gain a, a management person in City Hall, the person that can manage the entire City Hall, top to bottom. Okay, not I don't think know about any of us are going to pay that much attention on a daily basis. We're only talking about one person. Right? We're going to one additional one person. Well, yeah, Wayne would basically report to the City Administrator. Wayne, do you think you need a boss? No, but if the city says it, do I do? Yeah, I, I, I just don't, uh, I just don't see the reason for this. And as far as doing the job, there's a lot of things she's not going to do. Really? I mean, I got quite a list here. Oh, yeah. Some of the stuff, you know, not almost telling the truth is a bad thing. Oh, I mean, do we really, that's that's clear. Clear. Do that's we really want to go there? That's your say. That's all here. Let's just stay on the main topic here. Yeah. No, it's all on the same topic. We're not. We're not going to let this turn into a, a shouting match. Well, I Based on here, what we're going to go to the residents. If we need a city administrator, then I think we should put out an ad for one. We already have one. We don't have a city. She's been doing the job for the last year and four months. That's her job description. Yeah, that, that was pretty So cool. we're gonna we're gonna she's gonna do the same thing. Manage Wayne over there, which don't need managing probably. And for an additional fund. You're sitting here telling me that Wayne doesn't need managing, but you're the first one to stand in line and complain about Wayne doesn't do this and Wayne doesn't do that. So I don't think we really want to go there. And as far as well, no, as far as a little bit of money this is gonna cost the city, let's let do we really want to go down the road about talking what things are costing the city in terms of uh, expenses? No. The attorney fees and all that. On the topic of the city administration. But that's all part of the money thing. Right. So but in your motion though you didn't all you made was a motion to um, appoint Deb right, Belter as city administrator without probation. Right. How, how, many, how many people does she um, manage now? Who are you talking to me? Ask, ask Mrs. Belter. Yeah, how many people do you manage now? I manage the deputy clerk, Ms. Manson. And but I also, I also help in with the other employees if there's an issue that comes up at City Hall. I've been assisting them as well. You know, because we just hired a part-time person to do what you're supposed to be doing. And I manage her as well. And she, I, she's... And you made a comment one time that you don't have time now. But yet, you're working part-time. Why can't we maybe insist that you work on Thursdays along with everybody else? I am working 40 hours a week without being here on Thursdays. Yeah, but you can be work the regular hours along with the rest of us. That's the work that she done. Yeah. No, the work isn't getting done now. She said she can't do it all. The, the code enforcement. That's why we had to. The code enforcement. I, I, had, I have been doing code enforcement, so yes, <coughs> it's, it's infringed on my other work, but there is not a time that I have not gotten information that you people have asked. It's, there's not a time that I don't respond to residents. Um, the minutes are done, the packets are done. You, when, when I interviewed with you and Mayor Otto, you asked, you gave me several directives to complete, and within one year and three months, I completed all of those directives. Well, I don't know. There's some city ordinances that ain't been done that's over two to three years old. The city ordinances are a process. We have been working yeah. on the city ordinances to update them on a regular basis. Yeah, but you said it was finished, and they're not finished. There's some that are a couple years old. No, she said there's a work in progress. Yeah. Not that they're finished. It, it doesn't matter who you would have in this position. It would be a work in process, process to do the ordinances. You can't change them overnight. You have to have public hearings. You have to go through them um, with a fine tooth comb. 
Uh, we can ask any of the Planning and Zoning Commission members, you have to look at every line item in that ordinance when you are reviewing it. You have to work with the city attorney to make sure on the sign ordinance, for instance, Miles was working with Ms. Shutt because we have to worry about content based and our ordinance does not allow for that right now the way it's written. So it takes a long time to do ordinances. Yeah, but we can give you a part-time person to help do that. She's helping with coding, and yeah, no. writing letters. And today I trained her in on how to get the planning and zoning packet ready for me. But see, that that's not, you know, that's not part of her job. We hired her for this specifically. That's exactly what the administrative assistant does. She's supposed to assist me. Yeah. But see, you're kind of changing stories here. I don't remember. You know, I don't the know only if thing I we're going to gain is having her in charge of Wayne now for that additional fee. We didn't discuss and, it. And, and I don't think Wayne needs a boss down there. Well, that's, that's your personal opinion. Yeah. As far as I know, he's doing a good job. We haven't discussed a fee yet. You keep talking about a fee, but we haven't discussed one. No, 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 but it's going to be, it's going to be a, an added factor. I mean, that's the reason why. And I just wanted to know who really is behind this, because uh, the city our size don't really need a city administrator. There's no law that's... Well, we there. answered that question. If you look at the predominance of cities our size, the majority of them have city administrators. That's the proper way to run a city. The position that I'm doing for the city of Montrose is not a city clerk treasurer position. That work is being done by someone else, and I'm just signing off on the forms. Yeah, and see, and now, too, we're getting a lot of consultants involved. We're going back to the old days when everything was a consultant. Administrator didn't do anything. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not an expert in all these areas, so we do need consults to get. No, I'm not either, but I've been, I've been around here for a few years, been on the council for seven years. So you're saying you don't want consultants to help us with stuff around town? Well, I'm not, you know, we can be consultant with both yet. The so sure there's certain things, like, let's, let's talk about, uh, okay. Let's see here. Okay, park fees and so forth like that. Now, Axmar was here and wanted to build out there and start. And when he got done with his plan, there was nothing about park fees and there was nothing about the AURs. The citizens are supposed to get their money back. Now, when a city administrator overlooked that, don't we have park fees now? <clears throat> We do, but you gotta enforce it. You gotta tell these builders up front what to expect. I don't think we're hiding that from them when they say they want to build here. Well, when I brought it up at the at the planning and zoning meeting, everybody was shocked, including the developers. And even the uh, con the counselor we had then, he even come over and asked me about it after the meeting. No, this should have all been up front. Axmar and they were just shocked. When was this? Because the park fees would be mounted to $142,000. That is not why Paxmar pulled. And AUR was $28,000. They knew they knew all those fees up front. That's not why Paxmar pulled. They pulled from our community and another community for financial reasons. Hanover. Hanover, yes. Yeah. And they weren't supposed to pay a park fee. They were they had given us land and yes. they were going to put in a tree. Yeah, two acres of swamp. No, there's a for hundred and forty two thousand dollars. There's off land and there was gonna be a trail put in and they knew about the AUAR. They were told that right from the start. So well, if they acted they, they, if they acted surprised, they were trying to trick you. When I mentioned that the planning of yeah. they well they knew it from the very first time. meeting we met with them, they knew it. So that's not true. Okay, and then we're going to redo you know, the park fees and so forth. Then we had to, I don't know, consult it, but we conferred with Buffalo and Watertown as what they're doing, so we're on the right track. Okay, 
I'm not sure what that has to do with the conversation about this. But this is doing your job. So, it's you're saying you what want, you but you want her to do all of the stuff in the city without asking any professional okay. opinion outside of here, and just well, hope that she I gets it right by guessing. Well, you said you don't well, know what they are. Well, a lot of, to say on that, a lot of the stuff that is going on right now, we need to have the consultants because there's a lot of legal terms and everything that needs to be switched. So, unfortunately, we do need to have yeah, our well, consultants the, on hand. When the consultants get done with it, then we have to turn it over to our city attorney. Well, there are, consul no, there are no, consultants. All, all cities have to do that. All cities either have a city planner or on staff, or they hire a consultant. Consulting for planning, and same thing with the city attorney. We're trying to avoid getting in some of the quagmire that the city got into years ago. Like you know, that's why we're hiring quality people that know what they're doing. And this is why we don't want to get back into that pattern. Back into what pattern? Just what you're talking about. How it was a few years back. Everybody just ship shot and did anything they want. Who said that's not happening? Who said that's happening today? So then, okay, now when we had to redo the the ordinance for the park of these, we had to consult or do, and then they had to compare it with Buffalo and Waterloo. Now, on the next item, we come to solar farms, which most cities don't allow in the city limits. But yet, at the planning and zoning meeting, um, I brought up the fact that, well, you know, when we did the uh, park fees and so forth, we should consult them with Buffalo and Water. No, we're not going to do that. Why? Why didn't you do that, then? They, the, the city planner did use um, examples from Water Tower Buffalo. Because Steve Gritman, yeah. the head of the company, um, worked with Miles on that. That was when Miles first started, and he is the city planner for the city of Buffalo. So they used their information and what was passed. Finally, passed for that is information that benefits the city <coughs> in a greater way as far as getting parkland and or money or both. And it was used on formulas that were created for the city of Buffalo. And then what about for solar farms? If anybody do that? Miles was supposed to give me a list of cities, which he didn't do. So I gotta assume maybe there wasn't any. But well, what does that have to do with that well, position no, right well, now? That's her, that's her job. Well, not if you ask Miles. You know, what do we want to do? Make Wright County the or Montrose the solar capital of Wright County. So we're, we're, we're saving money by having that here, are we not? Not that I know of. I don't see the use of taxes. What are we getting from the solar farm over here? I I don't we, know. We keep raising taxes all the time. You know. And a lot of the percentage at which the property taxes are is actually gone down last couple. Yeah, but we still up to the, like all the things kept the same or no, no, no increase. I mean, last year we voted on five percent increase. This year, I think it's something about that much too. We actually decreased. The tax, yeah. the tax rate went down. Tax rate yes. Went down. Well, then why do we put out a statement that we're increasing or five percent then decrease? Well, that's what we just approved. Total amount of the tax levy is an increase of 5.9 percent, I think, from last year. But the tax rate itself has gone down because of our tax capacity. And then, and getting back to the planning and zoning and the with the solar business, a commissioner had wanted a copy of the CUP or new speeding, and she never produced that. Well, why would she hold that information away from the planning and zoning committee? Was there something in there that was hiding? That she I, she I, made a statement that she and Miles had to read it and make sure. We we did we did provide a copy of the CUP. 
to, to the planning and zoning commissions and, and to the city council. If you recall, they sent it to all of you. Um, the reason why we didn't do it right away. I can check away, on that tomorrow. My neighbor, a couple of days ago, he did that. Check your email. Huh? Check your email too. Okay, so we covered solar farms and the AUAR, those are the two main hot buttons. What else have we got with? Just like, uh, you know, Deb and Tom here, they both want me removed from the planning and zoning because I speak too much, but when I speak, I represent the residents. It, it wasn't a coup by Deb and Tom, there yeah. was other people that asked as well. But evidently, no way to count. Well, okay, well, <laughs> there, I was told that there were emails that were sent to Michelle that people who, they said yes or no, whether or not they wanted you on there. And nobody said no. Well, I don't know. I asked no, like, so Michelle read the information to the... She never gave us a tally. We never saw any emails. No. Did we tell her about the meeting? No, we, we, we talked about it at the meeting. I can forward the email. There was never any emails for it. Yeah, there was you never have anything bad on there. You would have said so. Yeah. So there wasn't anything there that was worthwhile. Well, I don't know, but that's not. No. We're not talking about. But anyway. Yeah. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a coup. You were no. saying that Deb was trying no. to get you removed from there, but it wasn't a coup. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about harassment. Uh, did you have a call from the state here a few days ago, or from uh, in regards to residents? What is it all? That residence I was wishing would be here tonight. Oh, we just Well, when that goes back to the um, personnel committee, per personnel committee slash also the um, the union. Yes. Union contract. Yes. So. That was the main discussion. Okay. Sorry about that. So did you answer that statement? Oh, yeah. Hold on, the attorney was going on is the policy question at hand, which is, is a city clerk position the right position for the city, or does the city want to have a city administrator? Um, that's a purely a, a policy question. Um, if there is going to be a city administrator appointed, um, then we need to do, uh, not necessarily need to, but it's common practice to have than an employment agreement that outlines the duties of the office of city administrator. So that would be something to consider as well as a job description that outlines formally what the city So that's what we need to do. Well, <laughs> that's what we were just discussing over here because the motion currently is just to appoint Dennis to a city administrator. <coughs> but by doing that, we haven't made any decisions yet as to if we need it. Secondly, what it entails third what the pay would be and all of the logistics that go along with it so maybe it should be that we look into all of that talk with our attorney to see what that would be unfortunately that is our consultants i yeah. uh, and as well as union because that is something else that we have to consider so i mean there is a motion to appoint her um uh, there is a second is, is this a definition definite appointment or is this uh it would be a permanent position with no, um, no probation or anything. But then we can't go out for advertisement for a real city administrator. No, because the motion has been to made a motion has been made to appoint Deb as our city administrator with no probation. And there's a second on the table right now. So with that, we can take I've the vote. Well, I mean, with that, we can take the vote. But again, that nothing, um, whether we proceed with moving Deb to that position, it has not been a discussion as to what the actual job description may change to, what the duties will be, what the pay will be, anything like that. That is stuff that we still need to consider, which would then come back to council. But that's a good idea. Right. I mean, you have to appoint somebody and then uh, then all, oh, gee, that's not going to work. Wouldn't it be better just to leave it as it is and then typically do these other discussions? Typically, typically there would be a uh, uh, vote 
to create a position and then uh, there could be a decision about filling the position and a formal employment contract could be negotiated that, that the council could approve. Before she actually enters into the job. Typically that would be how a council would, would handle that is create the position and then go out um, to fill it. And make all the logistics before we actually make the position. So then, if you want to go out and if you want to create one and go out and get it, we're going to pay a lot more than what we could potentially. Well, we have to create right no matter what. We have to create a position with all of the logistics that goes along with. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. We have meetings there for wages. So. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when you hired uh, Mrs. Belter, you took the a city administrator job description and, and basically scratched out city administrator and wrote in city clerk treasurer. Well, no, that, that's not right. That's not correct. That was back when um, Maggie was hired. That's, that what, they, that's what they did was they took the city administrator's job description, took the name administrator off, and called it a city clerk treasurer. They didn't change anything else. Yeah, but when, but, they, when you did them, when we had both of them, the, the job description hardly any difference? There is no difference. And there was, there was, no, no, that's right. There was no difference. You had a city administrator, clerk, treasurer at one time. And when that city administrator clerk treasurer left, you you created, you dropped the city administrator position and made it just a, a clerk treasurer position. But the only thing that changed on the job description was the public works director no longer reported to that person. That's the only thing that changed. So the job description is really a job description for a city administrator, and that's what Deb is doing is that job. Correct. She's doing the old city administrator job without the title. And the pay. And without the pay. Yeah, I mean, you have a person that's, you know, I've, I've sat through two reviews from Mrs. <coughs> and they've both been excellent. So I'm not sure why you want to, you know, go through all the hoops. I don't think it's necessarily that. I think it's just kind of getting all of our ducks in a row, really. And because, I mean, moving Deb into that position, I'm not saying that she doesn't deserve the position. I'm just saying, what does it all entail, and what's it going to cost? And I like to call the logistics ahead of time before we give a position to somebody. And I would like to know that before we finish this motion. Well, we can tell you what we talked about. I'm sure you already know that. Well, either way, we can. I mean, we can talk about it, but it hasn't been approved or nothing yet. And like you said, there's many things that we have to figure out before we proceed with it. Okay, we need to establish the job description, which is basically the job description she has, she has right now, with two exceptions. You change the title and you add supervision of, of Wayne, public mm -hmm. works on there. Uh, and you re the hourly rate. That's the two things that need to happen. Well, you also have to consider what it goes to with the union. And I think you had mentioned a contract of some sort. Correct. There may be some terms that are negotiated into a contract for a city administrator uh, related to um, job duties and also certain benefits that the city administrator <coughs> may request um, based on the fact that they're taking over a position that's more managing day-to-day -day operations and supervising employees as opposed to the city clerk's position, which is more uh, taking care of the city record keeping and, and those well, types of duties. Uh, we have had prior discussions in the personnel committee with Mrs. Bolt, Belter about this, and uh, she's not asking for anything uh, out from a contract standpoint, correct me if I'm wrong, um, other than the salary increase, the hourly rate increase. Um, everything else that was agreed to when she was hired on the city is basically remains the same. Is that correct? Correct. And, and she agreed to that when she took the job. Well, of course she agreed to it. What's your point? Well, you, you're going to make, you're going to change it. Change what? The job description. We're changing the job, the job description because the job title is changing. You know, we can, the job description is changing. 
job in the new job description, then we should go back to the regular hours, two to seven to four thirty, Monday through Thursday. Why? So you're, you're, you're just back. being punitive now. So you're being you're being petty, like I'm sorry. No, it's <coughs> the city. You know, the, the you're being the petty. Money. And have all those you're being petty. No, you're the one that's petty. Okay, that's that's good with that, guys. Um, <coughs> So we have the motion. We'll take the vote. What is the motion on this? To approve Deb as the city administrator. Appoint. With Appoint, no, sorry. To, with no probation. With no probation. Anything else? He added that the name no probation. I didn't hear. No, that, that was the original. That was the original. <laughs> yeah, that was the original. Um, and my only part of the discussion is um, I would like to see all of the, the logistics put in place before we approve this because we could approve it and Deb may not agree with what we come up with. So, um, Could you amend it to offer the position pending approval of well, numbers and such? Well, I mean, you could amend it, right? Have you been try something like that? To, yeah. Correct. That, that could be done. To, to offer the spot pending, pending agreement. Negotiation acceptance. Or whatever. Yeah, negotiation acceptance and salary. Okay. Well, um, we can amend the original motion then by saying uh, make a motion to appoint a Deb Belter to city administrator with no probationary period, uh, pending agreement on. Uh, Contract and scope work hours. That's in the scope that, of work. That could be part of the agreement. That would have to be the, an approval of the agreement by the council. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have to second the amendment? Yes. I'll second the amended motion. Is there a question? I just want to know why there doesn't have to be a um, probationary period. If we, I mean, Tom, if you're so, if you think she's going to do great, I mean, why can't there be a probationary period? There's no need. She's already been doing a job for you. Well, I know, but, but I don't think you just like leave that for other people. I mean, everybody goes through a probationary period with a job, even if it's a switch of titles, right? It's just a title no. switch. It's not a job switch. No. It's when I was well, promoted at work, I didn't get, I didn't have probationary periods. I was promoted and just, you know. I'm just wondering I mean, why that's just such a big thing. I mean, you know. typically from my experience, probationary periods are only on initial hires, not promotions or or move title change inside the company. Um, it's just only on initial hires. No, we have weight under a probationary period. When we switched yeah. him over, we yes, when we switched him to a public works director, he was on a year's probation. Yeah, in the, in the so public so sector, in the, the public sport. sector, it's commonplace for a probationary period. On, is it okay. in, in the corporate sector or yeah. normal business? But we're we're talking title change. Whereas Wayne didn't he go from working in the public works to being the director? Right, but this is potentially promotion because <coughs> it could be potentially a pay increase. It may only be a job title change, but it's still a prom potential. Potential. Promotion. Yes. Sorry. I made the motion as it stands. Okay. Any other questions? Why don't you guys just table this until you have all the information? That's what I'm hoping is going to happen. But okay, let's take a vote. Uh, Tom. I. I will vote no. Ben. I. Lloyd. No. Kirby. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Um, upcoming meetings. Planning and zoning is coming up this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. City Council is the workshop is the 23rd of September. We will also be having a Minnesota Department of Transportation open house that day at 6 o'clock. Park and Rec is October 7th. 
Next regular council meeting is the 14th, planning and zoning is the 16th, and council workshop the 20th of October. I have a couple of uh, acknowledgments. Being uh, the Montrose Days Committee for a lot of them were new to it this year. Um, they did a phenomenal job, so I'd like to acknowledge them, as well as Ben, Jennifer, and Jeff for their time um, with the Montrose Days Committee. Um, it's my understanding that they chose to not um, continue on, but I'm sure they'll still be around to participate or whatever. Um, can't really do Kevin, again, for taking on the position as fire chief and doing a great job. Um, Adam, and, Adam and Abby, right, both? Or was it just Adam Myers for the park and rec? Adam. Adam. Um, for giving us the information for the Forest Creek Playground. I'd like to also put a thanks out specifically to Jessica Binkley and Binkley and Matt Menard for all their years of service. And Matt was on the fire department for what, 17 years? 12 years. 12 years. 12 years, 17 days. Well, there's a 17 in there. Anybody else? Yeah, I'd like to commend the, the uh, fire department. Or Sheriff's Department for all the logistics and everything for Montrose Days. You guys did an awesome job <clears throat> keeping everything simple. Thank you for Montrose Days Celebration Committee. Some of you guys did okay. <laughs> um, I want to thank Public Works for the extra effort they helped out with for Montrose Days. Um, it's great. Um, city staff, we couldn't do it without you guys giving us the input, helping us out. Um, Wendy, Wayne, Deb, um, and then also thank the rest of the Montrose Day Celebration Committee and the ones that were volunteered to help. There. So, um, you know, and it, and it just makes uh, makes all the difference having the, the extra hands. So, and I want to say the pork chops tasted good. Just good. <laughs> What's that? Because it means seasoning them, yes. So, all right, that's all I have. Is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. 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 Aye.